these cooks are preparing over 13,500 meals for the 4,400 midshipmen who attend the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. For today's meal, kitchen staff told us they ordered 7,500 German sausages and about 500 pounds of sauerkraut. In addition to this sliced Lieberkäse, a German meatloaf similar to bologna for the Academy's annual Oktoberfest celebration. Voila. Feeding these future sailors isn't like feeding your average college student. As a midshipman, they are uh, engaged with a lot of activities, academic, military, and sports activities as well. So it is very, very important for us to feed them at least between 35 to 4,000, 4,200 calories per day. Feed on me! <laughs> and the food doesn't just have to be plentiful, it also has to be good. If food's bad, people's morale will be bad. If food's great, people's morale will be great. Good. You know, we're trying to boost the morale because back in the fleet, it's nothing like this. It's a real deal, but here, we take care of them. Cooking for thousands of midshipmen is no easy task. A staff of over 50 cooks and nearly 100 wait staff serves the students three times a day. This is a beast here. This is a machine that never stops. The second you're done with one meal, you gotta jump on the next or you're not gonna make it. We got access to the Naval Academy's dining hall to see how different meals are prepared and served starting with the biggest meal of the day, lunch. But not just any lunch, it's Friday, which means they're serving the midshipmen their favorite meal. Can you explain to me what is your favorite meal here? Oh man, my favorite meal is definitely buff chicks. I think buff chicks. I know a lot of people are big fans of buff chicks and I am as well. Yeah, definitely buff chicks. Buff chicks stands for buffalo chicken. And because it's so popular, uh, we have it every Friday now. But typically, it consists of a chicken patty. That's chicken right there. And then they have this uh, really like spicy, s spicy sauce. And people usually just slap it on and add some potato wedges, call it a day. We actually moved buff, buff chicks from a Wednesday meal to a Friday meal this semester. Kind of boosts the morale going into the weekend. We, we serve that every week. And we try to pull it away to get angry at us. When I first started, the chicken would be deep fried to try to make it a healthier item. It has since been cooked in the combi ovens. Kitchen staff told us they prepared seven to 8,000 pieces of chicken for this meal, which they put on trays with enough fries to feed the entire student body. The trays are then placed in the combi ovens and baked until everything is crispy. Nowadays we have combination combi ovens, they call them, that will either cook radiant heat, convection heat, steam heat, or combination heat, that's the combi oven, where you, where you can adjust it to anywhere from zero to 100% humidity, cook you know, half radiant, half steam. While the chicken patties cook in the combi ovens, two cooks prepare the sandwich's signature sauce and cheese. How many bowls do you have to do in the buffalo sauce? Uh, like now we're doing like 400 doing... Yeah, the chicken too, we always do like 400. The favorite thing here is chicken. I have to do 40, 40 trains of blue cheese to feed 418 tables of this shit. Wow. It's a lot of blue cheese. <laughs> yes. Once all the food is prepped and ready to go, it's a race against the clock to get it out the doors and onto the tables in the Naval Academy dining hall, known as King Hall, a 55,000 square foot dining hall with 392 tables. Right now we're in King Hall, which is the ward room. We call them ward rooms uh, in the Navy, not a dining hall or a mess hall or chow hall. So we have a different term because we operate like we're on a Navy ship and it's a ward room there. So this is the officer's ward room. King Hall is located in the center of Bancroft Hall, the massive dormitory on campus where all midshipmen reside. 
It's the largest single building dormitory in the world. All 4,500 or so midshipmen live together in Bancroft Hall, split between eight different wings and 30 different companies. While King Hall staff finish prepping for lunch, all midshipmen gather in front of Bancroft Hall for formation. Um, our brigade commander gives us commands, carry swords, all that stuff. First battalion, rest. After all the attention, parade, rest, all that fun stuff, they say, center face, and that's when the whole brigade um, turns towards the middle of T Court. And from there, um, they say forward, and then everyone starts marching towards Bancroft. The academic schedule is such that the really good class from 755 to almost 3 o'clock in the afternoon, whereas a typical college university, you might have a class at 6 o'clock in the morning, that you may have your last class 6 to 11 o'clock at night, and they can go and you know, eat whenever they want to. Not here. So we're limited by the time, what the academic schedule says we can do. They come all together and sit at the same time. King Hall wait staff then serves all 4,400 students in under five minutes. A task aided by 30 heated carts. Basically one tray is one table. 20 trays go into 20 tables multiplied by 12. So we have over 30 carts. It's insane of how they like roll out these like gray carts and then from there they have trays of food and they're just like handing it out to different tables. Um, and this is all in the span of like five minutes because everyone's hungry and they're all trying to eat. I've been in the big command, I've been in the carrier, which we serve 500, you know, 5,000 to 5,500 people. At no time that I serve 5,500 in one sitting. But this one is a little bit different. The mass massive sitting of 4,400 in 15 minutes is tremendous and never seen it like it before. And they only have from the start to, uh, to finish, they only have 15 to 20 minutes to eat their food. But the midshipmen eat in about 10 minutes. It's like they inhale the food. We do, because they, they, we put 18 pieces on each table, so 150%, so we give them additional round the table. Another thing too, we always have a few trays extra, so if they want more food, we just tell them, raise your tray up, the staff will bring you more food out here. We got not one, but two buff chicks, so we got, we call it the double big buff chicks chicken sandwich. What's so good about it? That's the mystery, that's what makes it that much better. The buff chicken might date back further than I've been here, since I've worked here. And it's, since I've been here, it's always been a favorite. It's never come off the menu. I don't envision any coming off the menu, but I know if we ever took it off the menu, we'd be in trouble. We'd have some complaints. But feedback is welcome at King Hall, a student liaison tasked with gathering the midshipmen's thoughts on the meals, works with the kitchen staff to help refine menus. Really what we do is we take midshipmen feedback and improvements that we can make in King Hall and translate that into how it could actually happen with the civilians and the military staff. Also, before releasing a new menu cycle, the staff invites midshipmen to come in and taste potential meals to see what they like. We have what we call menu boards, where we bring in vendors that come in here with the new products to display them. We have 60 midshipmen that come in, sample it, they grade it, they give us a score and say, okay, we like this, put it on the menu cycle. They, they do so much for us here to try and provide us with good food and in a quick manner that everyone's going to like. So they're always trying to work with feedback from midshipmen and staff saying, hey, here's what we didn't like about this meal, here's what we did like. And so immediately we try and go in and solve that problem. <laughs>
The menu is only one reason this meal is special. Because today is the Navy's birthday. So happy birthday, Navy, 248 years. Today is a day to think about our legacy. George Washington formed the Continental Navy in October 1775 to protect American colonies from British attack. Seventy years later, in 1845, Secretary of the Navy George Bancroft, the namesake of Bancroft Hall, founded the Naval School in Annapolis, Maryland, which later became the United States Naval Academy. Lunch at the Naval Academy is a mandatory meal, where all 4,400 midshipmen eat together at once. Well, the big difference you have here is we're still traditional. It's family-style feeding. But most everything else in college and university is bars, uh, Chick-fil-A, Subway, that they've contracted out with the local fast food restaurants to come in and do the food for them. For the birthday celebration, staff and students take part in a traditional cake cutting ceremony using a sword. For the Navy birthday, we usually have cake cutting in which the oldest person of the brigade and the youngest person of the brigade take turns cutting the cake and eating it, which is really fun to see. Like, like you'll see an old prior who like did like two to three years of service before coming here, and then you'll meet um, like it's typically a plebe who's like 17 years old and they barely made it into I Day. So the contrast is super fun to see. This year, the oldest midshipman at the academy was born in December 1996 and the youngest in April 2006. I think it's just symbolizing the connection of the Navy. It takes us between our present and our past and all the people who have, you know, helped to defend this country. In addition to the large cake, each table is given a smaller cake for the oldest and youngest midshipmen in their squad to cut. Thank you. The Navy birthday lunch has its own set of traditions. But even for everyday meals, eating in King Hall involves a lot more rituals and customs than a traditional college dining hall. Every table seats a squad a group of about 12 midshipmen from each grade level at the academy, all with different nicknames. Freshmen and first years are called plebes, then youngsters, second, second years. Um, in your third year, you're just called the second class midshipmen, but then your last year, your senior year, you're called the first year. In the middle of the dining hall stands a raised area known as the anchor, where leadership gathers before the meal. One unique tradition in King Hall is a favorite among students, a ritual they simply call Beat Army. Essentially, if a plebe or someone at the table opens a can of peanut butter and there's the seal on it, uh, they'll pass it to a plebe and they have to essentially heat up the jar as best they can. The reason why is because they need that warmth to make sure when it comes out, it's very liquidy. So they stand up on the chair, they unscrew it just a little bit, but not too much and then they scream, beat army at the top of their lungs and smash it against their forehead. Beat army! <laughs> and so it'll all explode everywhere and go on people. And so it's pretty funny. Some people hit other mids, which is kind of frustrating if you have a nice crisp, crisp uniform on, but just to get it as far as possible. And we have grads that come in here and sometimes eat and they'll still do it. And so we try and, we try and do it as much as possible. Unfortunately, if mids don't clean it up, it is kind of a, a headache on the staff to clean it up. So we limit it uh, in the same sense, but it is a fun tradition. At 1230, lunch concludes and the midshipmen quickly gather their things and head to their next class. Back in the kitchens, cooks have already begun prepping the next meal, a unique dinner that will require all hands on deck. Tonight, the Naval Academy will celebrate Oktoberfest. We've been doing that for about eight years now because we have a contingent of German midshipmen that come in from Germany. Tonight's entree, various pork, beef, and vegetarian wursts. Mm. 
The sausages, for the most part, are prepared in our ovens. Uh, they're not boiled, they're just prepared in ovens, they're heated up, uh, they're cooked all the way through and heated up and we serve them that way. Like the sausages, Voila. a lot of the food in King Hall is prepared in ovens. Some of the, uh, the food here are mostly uh, pre-prepared foods already. Not a whole lot of scratch cooking, like I said, due to the uh, uh, manning constraint. I hate to say it, we always have staff, staffing issues, shortages, but the show must go on. It's tough with you know, any government hire because everything has to go through all the, the red tape and the bureaucracy and stuff. It's not like the private sector where if you need somebody, you can hire them off the street and have them work in the next day. Well, I have about 45 that's actually working in the kitchen right now. For side dishes, cooks are preparing about 500 pounds of sauerkraut and a mound of red cabbage. And Lieberkäse, a traditional German dish similar to a bologna meatloaf that cooks slice into individual portions before placing it in the ovens. It usually the day before, the staff will start preparing the food. They'll put in whatever pans they need to do it, put it in the oven racks and whatnot. So the next day when they come in, they're basically putting the items in the oven or in the vats and whatnot. So it, it's difficult if we try to do everything in the morning of, we just run out of time. The menus at the Naval Academy are carefully crafted to fuel the needs of the midshipmen. So our primary focus is making sure that they're getting enough carbohydrates, protein, and fat, as well as fruits and vegetables for fiber and micronutrients. So it's really a balance of all of those things. In addition to the daily meals served in King Hall, there are alternative options in King's Court, which offers grab-and-go meals, as well as a large salad bar. Vegetarian options are also offered daily. They are prepping for the midshipmen that has some planetary restrictions and stuff, so we give them uh, available options. While some midshipmen have dietary restrictions, others require more calories than their classmates. There are certain sports that require higher weight, so those midshipmen do require more calories, so in, that, in those instances, they're going to have a little bit bigger portion sizes. The Navy football team, for example, receives double portions for every meal. We definitely always have to have extra. Football team gets 200%, maybe 10, sometimes 20 pans extra. Back in King Hall, it's nearly 5.30, and wait staff is being assigned to their positions to serve the special meal. From there, when it's empty, you need to replenish it, okay? okay. You help them too, okay? Meanwhile, other staff members are adding the final touches in nearby Dahlgren Hall to convert it into a German beer hall. Why do you guys go all out to do these events and really you know, promote morale here? Oh yeah, because uh, basically uh, this is a campus, so we're trying to boost the morale. Every month or so we have a special menu or special events for them. Because back in the fleet, it's nothing like this. In the fleet, it's gonna be, it's a real deal. Here, we take care of them, and uh, we do a lot of functions and special events for the crew for, to boost their morale. Well, let me put it this way, we spoil them, okay? <laughs> we operate on a four-week menu cycle and try to we try to mimic a lot what they're going to get in the fleet. Uh, the fleet operates on a 20-day menu cycle. They have no flexibility and change it. We have flexibility. I can buy food or we can buy food from any vendor that we want to. Because we're trying to encourage them, motivate them, and provide a good morale that they stay here. Because being a midshipman in the academics and the sports is a tough job for them. Back in Dahlgren Hall, midshipmen begin filing in for the festivities. A lot of times they'll come in, you know, full later hosen, or the women will come in a dirndl. Midshipmen over the age of 21 are allowed to try a selection of imported German beers. But everyone is under the close watch of a task force to make sure they're all following the rules. 
events. What's it like doing all these events? It's a great like opportunity to get to like network with like a lot of the officers, but like also like just like actually eating authentic food. Like that's like the cherry on top. The cost we get for midshipmen now is up to twenty dollars a day. Our biggest challenge is not running out of money. It's trying to spend the money. So we keep adding new items on the floor out here so we can spend the money. After each meal, the staff gathers all of the dirty dishes and brings them to the scullery. Every single plate, cup, and piece of silverware must be washed before the next meal. You know, it's unique. That challenge that you need to feed the 4400 Brigade strong, it's what kind of gets me up and interest and like pumped up to do uh, my next day. I guess there's a sense of purpose in cooking for midshipmen and future leaders of the world. It feels as if you're, you know, maybe pushing towards a higher calling. I worked at the Air Force Academy for eight years, been here 14 years, so I'd say I've got about 40 years food service experience. I've always loved it. It's always what I dreamed of, and this is a very ideal job. Go Navy, beat Army. Go Navy, beat Army.